your channel. Today I'm going to be reading about SCP-3560. This SCP was recommended by KR, and thank you KR for making the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And for anybody else, if you have any SCP or creepypasta suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll be giving you a shout out in the next video if I read it. So again, KR, thank you very much. I appreciate it greatly. So let's get right into the video. Due to its proximity to an existing foundation containment site, SCP-3560 is currently contained by Site-64 staff. All trails leading to SCP-3560 are to be closed to public access via a cover story of a severe landslide. Civilians attempting to access SCP-3560's location are to be detained by security personnel under the disguise of Portland Park Rangers. Use of Class A amnesthetics on detained civilians has been approved. SCP-3560 is a Class 3 interdimensional portal located within Forest Park, Portland, Oregon. The portal itself resembles an ellipsis made of white fog standing vertically on its end with an approximate length of one meter along the major axis. Physical objects that approach SCP-3560 from either face can enter its interior. The interior of SCP-3560 is a monochrome temperate forest. While plants located within SCP-3560 interior are made of biological material, they do not undergo cellular process typical to non-anomalous plants. The entirety of SCP-3560's interior is covered in a constant fog that restricts visibility to approximately 40 meters. Despite having no apparent light source, SCP's 3560's interior is lit at a constant illuminescence of approximately 3 lux. The full size of SCP-3560's interior is currently unknown, with no exploration attempts to locate a parameter. SCP-3560's interior is inhabited by multiple automatons, resembling the, the product models of Anderson Robotics in various stages of despair, hereafter referred to as instances of SCP-3560-1. SCP-3560-1 are frequently hostile to human life, particularly Foundation personnel, and have proven indestructible while well within SCP-3560. Attempts to capture instances of SCP-3560-1 and remove them from within SCP-3560 have been met with failure. As all instances become intangible and vanish shortly upon exiting SCP-3560's interior. Exploration of SCP-3560's interior has been suspended indefinitely. An additional four instances of SCP-3560 manifested with two forming within Site-64's staff, dormitories, and two within the, the Unusual Incidents Units, three Portland Headquarters, bringing the total number of instances to eight. Instances of SCP-3560-1 were observed to be capable of leaving SCP-3560's interior as Level 4 apparitions and abducted a total of 12 UIU and Site-64 personnel. Use of Hoffman Portable elect Electrothalmic Units proved effective in exorcising these SCP-3560-1 instances. Investigations into means of closing additional SCP-3560 instances is currently ongoing. Attempts to enter SCP-3560 and rescue abducted personnel have so far been met with limited success. 
The remains of four of the 12 abducted personnel have been recovered from within SCP-35601 in various states of mutilation. Deborah Stevens, who worked in AIDA programming, was found strung from a tree via aramid fibers. Subject appeared to have multiple straps of flesh removed from his body. Charles Freeman, who worked in power tech development, was found in a clearing and had been drained of his blood. Orav Jindal, who worked in surveillance specialist, found, was found dismembered over a distance of one kilometer. Mari Tanaka, who worked in public relations, was found adjacent of SCP-3560 and 3-way. Subject had her skin removed and was revealed to be an Anderson Robotics Salsaker Android. Subject was unresponsive with her internal AI heavily corrupted. Each recovered individual was found bearing a heart symbol with a jagged line running down its center sewn into their back with a rabid fiber. Attempts to locate the remaining abducted personnel is still ongoing. The following is a summary of Exploration Log 3563. So basically, a team called MTF Gamma 13 enters SCP 3560. Their objective is to find a parameter or to capture instances of SCP-35601. Upon entering SCP-3560, they, they see that it's foggy and it limits their vision, but their compasses work, so they head south as they were ordered to do so, since Tau-51 and Eta-13 already checked north and west. After 30 minutes... Okay, so I want to stop back at after. After 20 minutes of traveling, they hear mechanical chirps, and when they find the source of the mechanical chirps, they spot S an SCP, what well, they spot SCPs 35601, so they're assembling AR Maryland aerial drones that are hanging from a tree, acting as birds. The team then continues the exploration and does not attack these drones because they fear that doing so will attract attention. After traveling for 10 minutes, one of the group members reveals that SCP-3560 ones cannot be killed, but they can be incapacitated using traditional methods, for example, gunfire. If SCP-3560-1 is shot at, you could damage can be inflicted on it, which can give the team enough time to make a run for it. However, it, SCP-3560 will recuperate, will recover from the damages done. After traveling for 10 minutes, a team member yells, get down. They take cover, and then an SCP-35601 resembling an AR Aplomado Faculty Defense Unit wanders by. It stops, scans the area, then moves on. The team continues, but then hears sirens. Then the previous SCP-35601 they saw the charges at them firing its weapons. The team hides behind trees and they manage, they return fire back at this SCP and they manage to take it down. But then shortly after they hear more sirens and nine SCPs with the same appearance of the previous SCP they took down appear and they start firing at them. At this point, the team makes a frantic attempt to run back to the entryway of SCP-3560. And while they're running back to the exit, they are being fired at by these SCPs. Uh, they are they resemble an AR Aplomado Faculty Defense Unit. Then they get surrounded by 15 of these SCPs that resemble Aplomado units. And then an SCP-35601 resembling a utility humanoid drone appears. And the drone tells the human, first you, you, tor you torment us there. And now you torment us here. When will it end? After this happens, then MTF Tau 51 arrives as backup and engages with the SCP 35601 
in a long firefight. They result victorious and they extract MTF gamma 13 from SCP-3560. After the previous expedition, which was the third expedition, MTF Gamma 13 conducts an interview. MTF Commander Clarissa Shaw interviews Vince Anderson. We find out in the interview that the entities in SCP-3560 resemble products, and this surprises Anderson. Anderson then states that his robot tech was like sapping a soul into a dead body, not like traditional robot tech. And he also states that when a body is destroyed, the soul wanders. So the entities, so this suggests that the entities in SCP-3560 are robot souls. When asked by Clarissa why this portal existed in the woods, Anderson suggested that it opened up in the woods in that particular location because a lot of robots were killed there. So this place holds a lot of resentment, a lot of anger from these robot souls. And he also states that SCP-3560 may also be a maybe a pocket dimension that was taken over by these robot souls. Anderson states that he does not know how to destroy these souls since once they are made they can be destroyed. However, he states that Prometheus Labs has a, has a project that may do the trick. However, applying such technology may anger the robot entities in SCP-3560 and may cause them to exit and retaliate. 